right. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike. I, uh, I'm from Pepid, uh, and today's topic is going to be implementing CDS by putting providers first. Um, this is our uh, third and final uh, HIMSS virtual booth uh, after the cancellation of the HIMSS show, so I wanted to thank everybody for showing up. Um, and we'll go ahead and just uh, dive in. All right, so I wanted to start just by talking a little bit about CDS clinical decision support uh, just on background. Um, in the uh, left-hand box here, I, I wanted to talk just a little bit about what the, the vision of CDS has been in the past, um, the reality that we see, and the goal of, of PEPID in terms of uh, implementing CDS by putting providers first. So uh, the, the vision here behind clinical decision support, obviously, as um, electronic health record software was starting to become more and more prominent, um, and there's been more and more talk about uh, integrating, implementing clinical decision support uh, tools and data that was going to help make uh, the work of clinicians easier, help keep patients safer by making sure that um, every, uh, you know, the treatment guidelines are evidence-based and that the software is supporting that. Um, but the reality that we've seen a lot, um, and there's been many, um, uh, you know, many, many articles and um, uh, works written about the uh, the reality being that uh, we tend to see more uh, pop-ups, uh, more reminders that are kind of unnecessary. A lot of CDS ends up being more redundant and frustrating than, you know, helpful um, and intuitive. Uh, so at PEPID, our mission, um, it, it, as I said in the, uh, the box here on the right-hand side, you know, our mission was we wanted to create and deliver clinical decision support resources that empower, improve, and speed up medical decision making. Um, so what do we mean by that? Um, we wanted to refocus on the, the provider, like we say again in the title, putting providers first. Um, and we were envisioning this uh, cycle in the middle here of, you know, in, instead of implementing clinical decision support as a reminder or a pop-up or something that the, um, that the clinician isn't asking for, we wanted to refocus on decision making. What will empower, improve, and speed up medical decision making? So we've got this cycle in the center here of, you know, a, a patient care question um, that, you know, a provider might have. What's the next step that I need to take? We want to guide them to, you know, the evidence-based guidance that they're seeking that will inform them about how to, you know, how to answer that question, what decision to make. And then the last step is, making the decision itself, you know, making a choice about how we're going to care for the patient um, and then continuing on with the, the cycle in your workflow. Um, so how does empowering, improving, and speeding up align with this cycle? Um, you know, we want to empower by making sure that we're presenting what's needed to inform the provider. If we're not informing them, if we're not presenting them with information that they don't already have, then we're not really helping. Uh, again, to the point about uh, reminders or pop-ups that um, either tell clinicians what they already know or, uh, you know, just interrupt the workflow. Um, that's that's not what we want to do. We want to put the, the provider's needs first. Um, and, you know, by focusing on this core value in the, the center of the, uh, the circle here, deliver what's relevant and let providers be providers. So that starts by uh, prevent, uh, presenting information that's informing the provider. Um, we want to improve decision making by making sure that we're cohering to the evidence. Um, everything needs to be evidence based. Everything needs to come from uh, sources that are um, well researched, um, that are um, you know empirical, have been peer reviewed, um, and just make sure that we're we really have a strong supporting foundation for the information that we're presenting, so that the the, uh, um, the decisions that our providers make are cohering to the evidence to the guidelines. Uh, and then lastly, and very importantly, we want to speed up medical decision making. Um, the, and the two components of this are, one, obviously saving time. We all know time is money. Um, we all know that, uh, you know, the um, if we can save time for a provider, we're helping to make their life easier. Um, we're helping to save costs for their, uh, for their health system or their employer. Um, we're helping to Im improve the, uh, the, the experience of the patient um, by limiting the amount of time that they have to spend. Uh, in a healthcare setting, um, and then also crucially, we're saving effort. If we're um, able to help uh, guide a, a provider to 
the evidence-based information that they want in a way that's faster, uh, then we're also, we should be saving their effort, you know, saving their mental resources so that they're not wrestling with their CDS tools, um, but rather they're, they're working in a, in a flow with their tools. Um, and they can save their mental effort and their mental resources for being a, being a provider um, instead of on using the tool. So how are we trying to focus, us at HEPID, how are we trying to focus on making this happen? So we've come up with a set of guidelines that we follow when we're trying to create our CDS resources that help support this, the, the mission. Again, the mission on the left-hand side, empower, improve, and speed up medical decision-making. How do we refocus on decision-making and supporting that? Um, so the first step for us is, is curating relevant content with a focus on actionable information. Um, the point here is, again, decision-making. I'll say it again and again, decision-making, decision-making. How do we make sure that if we're presenting information to you, um, it's written and presented in a way that helps support uh, you as the provider taking an action, making a choice about what you're going to do next within your workflow or within your, um, uh, your, your treatment uh, for that patient. There's kind of two parts to this um, this curation process. One is formatting. Um, we'll transition at the end of this uh, PowerPoint presentation to just a brief demonstration of of Pepid itself, um, how our uh, how our platform and our system is organized. And one thing you'll see is uh, we write all of our clinical content in bullet points. Um, it seems really simple, but it makes a big difference visually organizing things in a way that um, helps to uh, alleviate kind of the uh, uh, what my professors in university would call cognitive task load, making sure that things are easier to read, easier to absorb. Um, so we organize things in bullet points. We pride ourselves on being comprehensive, but we also want to be concise, right? Uh, things that are, you know, short and to the point. Um, and that, again, speaks to the point about being actionable. Um, what's the, uh, the, the relevant information that I need to know to, to make a choice? And, and stripping away things that aren't essential for that. Um, background information, uh, you know, is obviously important. Um, but for us, when we're building CDS tools, we want to focus on what's actionable. Uh, the next step here is linking between different content types and topics. Uh, wherever possible uh, to avoid tab switching. I, I'm calling this tab switching. I think we're all familiar with this when we're working on a problem or we're, um, uh, you know, we're uh, at the office or in the clinic or wherever we, we may be, and you've got a lot of different uh, either tabs in your browser or a lot of different um, software that's, that's open, and you have to switch between different uh, tools in order to accomplish one task. Uh, so we want to always, in our, um, in our interface, uh, try to make sure that everything is linked together in a really intuitive way so that we don't have to open those multiple tabs or open multiple different systems in order to stay within one workflow, um, stay within one thought process. Um, the, the sort of other uh, uh, component of this, uh, in addition to, you know, linking between everything, which again we'll demonstrate later, but uh, the other crucial point is just uh, comprehensiveness, making sure that every uh, every piece of information that you need is within the same resource uh, so that we're not segmenting out or um, siloing off different topics. So a really common example that I always use is our clinical content, information about diseases or conditions or guidelines or procedures it is also linked to all of our content related to drugs, um, to, to medications, um, uh, adverse reactions, dosing guidelines, things like that. Um, we don't want our drug information segmented away from our clinical information um, because we want to, again, maintain workflow and focus on speeding up the process of finding the information we want to find. Uh, the next step is, is related, connecting related CDS tools and modules with the content wherever possible. Um, again, this is a point about maintaining workflow. So, um, I've been talking a lot about our content, clinical content, drug information content um, that we have available here at Pepid. And we think that content is really crucial to supporting decision making. I think we all can, uh, on some level, intuitively recognize that if I want to make a decision, I need to, to read some kind of information in order to find uh, or inform myself about 
what my next steps might be, what's the information that I need to, um, to gather. Uh, but then we also connect a number of different uh, clinical decision support tools like um, drug interactions checker or uh, dosing calculators, uh, medical calculators, IV compatibility, things of that nature that, um, you know, any provider will need to, to check at some point um, to make sure that, uh, you know, we're um, keeping our patients safe, that we're, um, you know, keeping things within guidelines. Uh, we also want those, those tools um, that require some kind of interactive component to be connected with the content as well. It's, it's the same point. We want to keep you within one workflow, within one thought process. So we want everything connected and linked together. Uh, and the last step on here is integrating um, all of these uh, tools that I'm talking about with existing software um, and platforms in a context-aware manner wherever possible. Um, so we want to make sure that we're, um, again, presenting the information that's relevant to you, but we need to present it uh, where you live, so to speak. Uh, so we want to make sure that when we're integrating any of the pieces of our knowledge base or any of our tools um, within your workflow, that we can integrate our modules with your EHR or um, with your, you know, your uh, practice management software, whatever it is that you're using, um, and uh, with a, an awareness of what your specialty is, um, what's the information within your specific specialty or subspecialty that's going to be relevant to your workflow. Briefly follow up on that last point, um, I wanted to show, this is the slide that I borrowed from a, another presentation that we've given in the past, but uh, this just shows all of the different, um, what we call suites or, or clinical repositories that are available within PEPID. Um, we have quite a variety here. You can see four different specialties. So it's everything from emergency medicine and primary care to um, uh, nursing or pharmacy. Um, different suites for uh, medical students, nursing students, specialties within nursing, critical care, gerontological nursing, etc. cetera. Um, uh, this is just to, to reemphasize that last point about making sure that we're uh, uh, curating information that is for uh, you, for, uh, for your specialty, presenting the information that's relevant for your workflow and not presenting things that aren't. So in summary, uh, you know, how do we um, make sure that we're putting providers first uh, when we're implementing clinical decision support? Uh, we want to refocus on the goal of supporting decision making, um, not getting in the way by presenting too many, um, you know, uh, pop-ups or reminders that are unnecessary, uh, making available the uh, tools, the information that you need that's going to, um, you know, allow you to make a decision when you have a patient care question. Um, next week, content is king. Uh, we want to make sure that, again, curating what's relevant and actionable, a focus on actionable information that's going to help you make a choice about providing patient care, linking that information um, wherever possible to other topics or um, subjects, other tools that are going to uh, keep you within one workflow. That's the third point on here, tools instead of pop-ups. Uh, using the data that's in our knowledge base to power an active use case where I'm, uh, uh, you know, using a tool to uh, make a calculation or check for an interaction instead of having a pop-up that I didn't ask for tell me about that information. Uh, and then lastly, making sure that we're focused on context. The context matters. We have a focus on presenting information by specialty so that we know that we're gearing our content towards what you need and also delivering that uh, information where you work or where you live, so to speak, uh, whether that's on mobile, um, whether that's you know, through a browser, integrated with your EHR, um, making sure that it's uh, delivered in a context-aware manner. So I'll go ahead and, and transition really briefly to um, just a quick demonstration to show in practice how um, we're implementing some of these guidelines here. So pardon me while I switch over to my browser. And what I'm showing you here is this is uh, Pepid's uh, online or, or browser platform. Like I was saying, we also have a mobile application. Um, and we have a lot of our, our customers who would like to access the information that way. Um, and plus, we also integrate with uh, any piece of the demonstration that I'm going to show you today. Um, we can also integrate any of those modules with your uh, EHR software or, you know, other platform that you're using. 
Uh, I'm going to briefly familiarize uh, familiarize you with the uh, the layout here. So I've got, um, like I said, I'm in a browser. I'm just on a website where I can log in. PepidConnect.com is our URL for the uh, for the resource. And then below that, I've got my search bar here. So my search bar, I can search for any um, topic. It says you know drugs, disease, uh, labs, uh, things of that nature. Uh, just below my search bar, I have a set of tabs. And these tabs correspond to our different um, tools. So I've got a, a favorites and notes option, um, which I can show later. Um, our favorites and notes will show on this main homepage in this left-hand panel here on the left. I don't have anything selected right now. That's why this, this favorites panel is blank. Um, the content tab will link to uh, this main home screen. So like I was saying, I've got a left-hand panel here that shows Favorites and notes on the home screen. This is also used for different uh, navigation options or tools, which we'll transition to. I'll show you uh, momentarily. And in the right-hand panel, this is our table of contents. That's where this content uh, tab will bring you. Uh, this is just kind of an overview showing different um, sections of uh, information that I can drill down to if I want to, to see more information about, say, orthopedics, for example, or um, clinical inquiries in our evidence-based medicine section. Uh, continuing along the, the top here, uh, this uh, covers the, the rest of our CDS tools. So um, that's our, we have a drug interactions checker. Um, we have a drug allergy checker, a library of medical calculators, several hundred medical calculators. Um, this is actually a huge resource to everything from, you know, calculating uh, kidney scores for risk of heart attack, um, body surface area, um, uh, uh, BMI, you know, anything you can think of. Uh, we have a differential diagnosis tool. Um, a lab manual that covers, you know, different reference ranges, things like that. Uh, we have a pill identifier tool um, that allows you to uh, identify loose pills, um, check based on, you know, scoring or imprint, um, and uh, as, uh, you know, identify, it covers every pill available in the world, so it's very comprehensive. News and alerts allows us to, uh, our editorial staff to uh, highlight different topics that either, you know, they've been recently updated or maybe they're in the news or our editorial staff just wants to um, make sure that they're um, drawing attention to a topic of interest. And then under the more tab, we've got even more. So we've got an ICD lookup tool for looking up uh, billing codes, uh, an indications tool that allows you to um, search for uh, drugs by indication and vice versa. Uh, an ID compatibility tool and lastly, just a, a dictionary of medical terms. Um, alphabetized list of all of our, um, uh, you know, medical terminology that's in the uh, in the suite. Okay, so now that I've I've gone through the uh, the layout, let's go ahead and, and dive in really quickly, just so I can show again how our um, our vision for putting providers first in CDS kind of works. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a topic. I'm going to search for a, a disease in this case. Let's search for cirrhosis, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that search result, and then here you can see uh, an example of our uh, clinical content. So I was talking a lot about content and how it's organized in the presentation, and as I said earlier, and you'll see here, if you're looking at our content in the right-hand panel, everything is organized into bullet points. Again, we pride ourselves on being comprehensive, but we also want to be concise. So uh, everything is written in this bullet-pointed um, I, I like to say a cheat sheet style, you know, when you're taking a test, it, it's nice to have the textbook, but you might also want a cheat sheet uh, to help you get to the answers more quickly, and speed is a, is a big focus for us. So um, we have everything written in bullet points here, um, and uh, you'll also notice that uh, we have a number of different links in here. Another piece that I, I talked about during the presentation is linking between different types of content or between different tools as often and wherever possible to keep you within one workflow or in one tab. So if we have images, like I've got a, a sample image of a CT scan here, I've got a link to view an image right in the, uh, the section for diagnosis. I can click to view the image and then I've got my, uh, my uh, CT scan right there. Um, again, notice it's, it's popping up in the same flow, in the same screen. If I want to jump to a particular section within this uh, monograph on the, the right-hand side, then on my left-hand side, I've got uh, what we call our quick links. Um, so this uh, allows us to jump to any uh, given section. So let's say that I want to look at outpatient management, for example. I just click on that link, 
And then now I've jumped right to my outpatient management section. Uh, the idea here is we're uh, uh, reducing or eliminating scrolling as much as possible. You can see that I've also got a list of uh, references here at the bottom. So this covers, um, you know, the, uh, I, I should back up uh, briefly just to talk about where PEPIT's information comes from. We have an in-house staff of uh, medically licensed clinical professionals. Um, that's, uh, you know, MDs, SWANDs, uh, RNs who um, uh, will consult evidence-based resources, curate the information like I talked about, um, and then they write it up in this uh, trademark puppet style um, where everything is, uh, you know, uh, made to be concise with a focus on actionable information. Um, so you know that you're getting uh, content that's been peer reviewed. Um, and we have an internal peer review within our editorial staff, followed by an external peer review with our clinical partners. So that's uh, within every specialty. Our emergency medicine content is reviewed by uh, ASAP, uh, the American College of Emergency Physicians. Our uh, uh, pharmacological information is all reviewed by ASHP, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I was uh, making the point about, uh, you know, navigation. I can jump to different sections with my quick links. I have uh, links within the content itself if I want to jump to another topic. Um, and again, the information is all streamlined to focus on action. You know, if I want to know about treatment uh, uh, for a condition, then here I've got information telling me, you know, treat complications and underlying conditions. You know, if I want to jump to see information about uh, how do I treat chronic viral hepatitis, I just uh, click on that link and then it brings me to that subject. Now I've got information here. If I want to jump to, you know, information about follow-up, I can jump right there. I've got links to go to an evidence-based inquiry. If I want to jump back to look at the topic I was looking at before, then I can use the back button in my browser or um, we have what we call our breadcrumbs here that just keeps track of the last several pages that I viewed. So I can jump back to cirrhosis if I want to do that. Um, just underscoring the idea of linking everything together, keeping you within one workflow the whole time. If I want to look at treatment options, then I jump here. Um, and we are also linking together different types of uh, content. So I've got my clinical content here. If I want to look at a drug, uh, I'm going to get to my drug information. You'll notice my drugs are all hyperlinked as well. So if I want to look at uh, propranolol, I can click on that link. And then here I am. Uh, so we've talked about linking together different types of content. We also talked briefly about linking together different tools. So um, I've got, you know, in my, uh, my, my drug information listed here. I can find information about dosing, uh, adverse drug reactions, if I wanted to look at that, kinetics and dynamics, et cetera. Um, but let's say that I want to, again, make a medical decision. I'm looking at information about this drug. I know that I want to use this, uh, this medication for my patient, and I want to um, do a dosing calculation. Let's say I've got a pediatric patient. I want to jump to pediatric dosing. I can click that link. And then I've got additional hyperlinks here that go to my dosing calculators. So let's click, click on uh, one of these blue links here. And then in my left-hand panel, now you'll see I've got a, a dosing calculator that's opened up. I've still got my content on the right-hand side. So if I want to be uh, you know, continuing to read or look at another section, I can do that. And then if I want to make the calculation, I can enter my patient's weight here and get a quick uh, dosing calc. So just to underscore one last time, I went from uh, content that's focused on uh, my specialty. Um, I found information about a, a, a disease, you know, a, a, a diagnosis for my patient. I was able to find treatment options and a procedure for um, treating that disease. I was able to find information about the drug, uh, the, the actual treatment that I was going to use. And then I was able to make a, a dosing calculation specific for my patient. Um, and I did all of that in, uh, in seconds, um, even while talking and explaining what I was doing. Um, and the comprehensiveness of this, uh, this resource really uh, is really very broad as well. Uh, you know, I was just showing a pediatric dosing calculator. We have over 1,200 pediatric dosing calculators, 2,000 additional dosing calculators, which uh, no other resource on the planet has. Um, and this uh, connects you with the largest drug database on the planet. Um, we have a, a, a comprehensive drug database covering um, North American and other international drugs. 
um, used in, uh, in institutions all over the world. Um, plus links to the uh, uh, connections to the other tools. Again, so if I want to go back to um, reopen my quick links here, I can click to view my subsections within this topic. And then say I want to check for um, interactions with this drug between this drug and others. I can click on interactions and then open my drug interactions tool that, again, will populate in the left-hand side. Again, we're keeping the right-hand panel free for content. Whenever we want to show uh, that, that text information, we want to keep you in one tab so that we're not opening additional tabs, interrupting your thought process. And then in, on the left-hand side, I've got a selected drugs box here with the drug that I was just looking at, and then I can add some other substances in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add, say, fentanyl, just for uh, demonstration purposes. Fentanyl's in the news a lot, so I always like to add that. Uh, let's add a, a couple more here. I'm going to add verapamil and let's say codeine. Oh, and let me uh, open up my filters here. All right, so I was just showing I added a number of different drugs. I've got 11 different interactions that are going on here. Um, and even just at the level of the interaction alert. So I've got 11 alerts populating down here. Um, and we want to deliver as much information as quickly as we can. So we've got color-coded icons here on the left-hand side. They go from one to five. That's least the most severe possible interactions. Um, if I want to, uh, you know, if I want to add another substance and continue to get more um, results, I, I, I don't have to transition between different tabs. Again, uh, and all of our interactions work on the ingredient level. So if I want to add, um, you know, other non-medication substances like uh, uh, herbals, supplements, even lifestyle choices like smoking, I can add that. Now you'll see I've, I've doubled my number of interactions. I'm up to 22. Uh, so that's quite quite a lot. We were we were talking about uh, you know not overwhelming, focusing on what's relevant. We obviously have the option to filter uh, as I had earlier by at the level of uh, concern. Let's say that I just want to look at the most severe interactions. I want to look at four and above. Uh, we also have the option to filter by substance as well. If I just wanted to focus on one of these uh, uh, components. Um, I'm saying we want to deliver as much information as we can in the alert. So we have our level of concern here. We also have little arrows indicating whether the, um, the, the substance that's listed, its levels are being increased or decreased in the body. Um, we also, uh, for pharmacists, we also include uh, little indicators PK or PD for pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic interactions. Our uh, pharmacists always appreciate that. And then if I want to drill down into an interaction, I can click on the alert. I have a, uh, a, a nice, a, a short overview of what, um, uh, what's occurring with this interaction. So I can, you know, help to um, uh, guide the decision-making process just from here. Or if I want to dive deeper, I've got a, a link here for more info, which I'll click on. And then I can open a full interaction monograph in the right-hand side. So uh, now I've got a full breakdown of everything that's going on with this interaction, uh, mechanism of interaction, effect, level of concern. And then specific to PEPID, I, I, I've uh, been repeating it, and I'll, I'll repeat it once more. We want to focus on decision-making. We've got this action section here. Um, this gives uh, suggested next steps that I, as the provider, might take. Um, going beyond just providing information about the interaction, but to say when this interaction is occurring, what's the next step uh, that I need to take? What are my choices that I that I can um, um, that I can choose from? Uh, so we have that action section here, source of recommendation, uh, and again the references are always included at the bottom. Uh, so this gives just a, the, a very basic overview of um, everything that's available in PEPID, um, and I hope that this has helped to demonstrate some of how we focus on putting providers first, um, putting the clinician first uh, to make sure that we're um, helping to uh, support them with our CDS tools um, and really uh, capitalize on the promise of what CDS can be. Um, we know from talking with our users that they, they really appreciate the way that things are uh, streamlined, the way that we organize and present our information with that focus on, on the, the, uh, the needs of the provider, um, and they really find that it does help to 
saves them time, saves them headaches when they're navigating through their workflow. Um, if you're interested at all in trying out Pepid, I also just wanted to briefly say I've got another tab that's open here. Um, this is just our website, pepid.com. I was going to, to show that um, you can navigate to here, pepid.com, and then we do have a link for a free trial in the, uh, the upper right-hand corner here. So you just click Start Free Trial. There's no credit card required. There's no obligation, anything like that. Uh, the link that it will bring you to is pepid.com slash trial. Uh, you can go ahead and sign up um, to, to try out any of the suites for any specialty that you'd like. Um, and I would just encourage you to do so if uh, you've been at all interested in what you've seen and you think that this might be useful either for you as a, a provider or for your organization. Where again, I'll say this is our, our standalone browser application, um, but we do also have a mobile app. We also integrate with the HRs. All right. So at this point, I will um, go ahead and just uh, uh, throw it to the audience if anybody has any questions. Um, I'm going to keep everyone on mute for the time being, but in the chat function on GoToMeeting, um, you can go ahead and ask any questions uh, if you have any, and I'll just stay for a couple more minutes here to, to answer those questions. All right. And we've, we've already got one, uh, a question from Megan here asking um, which EHRs Pepid has integrated with in the past. Uh, and it, it, it's all of the major EHRs, um, everyone that you would expect, Epic, Cerner, Inner Systems, uh, Medhost uses Pepid, um, uh, and we've been uh, integrated with EHRs uh, literally all over the planet, everything from Lehigh Valley Health System, uh, here in the USA to, uh, um, uh, to university hospitals in the Middle East. Um, so it, 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 any EHR, uh, we're compatible with it. We're complying with all the latest standards from HL7. Um, and we have APIs for all of our different, um, uh, all of our different uh, modules, all of our different web services. So uh, we, whatever your EHR, whatever your software is, we can integrate with it. All right, and uh, one more question we have um, from uh, uh, Brittany asking, uh, do we have uh, trials available for API integration? And the answer to that is yes. We, uh, we have a sandbox environment that your developers can uh, feel free to take a look at, um, and we do that frequently. Uh, we, uh, if you're at all interested and you want to see um, you know, how the service is going to work for you, um, then uh, just reach out to us. Um, you can email either uh, uh, my direct email, which is uh, M. Bayok, that's my uh, first initial and last name, M as in Michael, B as in boy, A-Y-U-K at pepid.com, um, or, or just our, our sales line, sales at pepid.com, uh, and, and ask for trial access, and we can set you up. So, uh, yes, we do offer trials for, for API integration. All right. Um, if there are any other questions, then, um, you know, please do still feel free to throw them into the chat. Um, I'm going to end uh, my recording for this, uh, this presentation right now, but I wanted to thank everybody again for showing up. I hope that this has been informative or useful for you, and I uh, hope everyone uh, will have a great rest of your afternoon and uh, stay safe and healthy out there.